in this video, I want to talk about CPCTC as a reason in proofs, uh, because this is something that has been confusing students a lot, I think. Let me start off by telling you what CPCTC is not. CPCTC is not a reason why you would show that two triangles are congruent. To show that two triangles are congruent, you need to use those three letter proofs like SSS or SAS or ASA. Um, CPCTC says that when you know that two triangles are congruent, you can say things about the sides and angles that make up that those two triangles. Let's take a look at a specific proof and you'll see what I mean by this. All right, so here is a diagram and we are given uh, which is kind of an unusual thing. We are given that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CDE. So they say right off the bat that we know that two triangles are congruent. And what we need to do is we need to prove that triangle BEC, this triangle here, is congruent to triangle DEA that that triangle is congruent to this triangle over here. All right, so let's see. We start off by knowing that triangle ABE is congruent. So the top triangle is congruent to the bottom triangle. That's given. And let me take some tracing paper and show you what that means. So here's the bottom triangle. If I rotate this, it lines up with the top triangle. And so since after doing that, these two triangles are the same size and the same shape, all of the sides that line up and all of the angles that line up when I do that have to be congruent to each other. All right, are any of those sides and angles interesting to me when I look at this blue and yellow triangle that I need to figure out? Yeah, you know what? This yellow side is a side of this bottom triangle. So let's take a look at that. That's this side right here. So when I rotate this around to its congruent triangle at the top, it means that this side must be the same length as that side, since those two triangles line up like that. So therefore, I can say that BE is congruent to DE. And my reason for that is because I'm taking advantage about knowing that these two triangles are congruent. And so I can say that these two sides are corresponding parts. So there's the one side after I do the rotation, it corresponds to this side in the top triangle. So those are corresponding parts and they're congruent triangles, the top and bottom triangles. So therefore, these two sides must be congruent. All right, I didn't use this to prove that the triangles are congruent. I used the fact that these two triangles are congruent to prove by CPCTC that these two sides must be congruent. All right, are there any other sides that I'm interested in showing, knowing that this bottom triangle is congruent to the top triangle? Yeah, what about that blue side there? That's the side of the bottom triangle. So what's the corresponding side in the top triangle? Once again, I do that rotation and it lines up with line segment CE. So these two must also be congruent. So AE is congruent to CE. Once again, because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And it's not just the sides that are congruent. I could also show that the angles are congruent. I could show that this angle down here is congruent to this angle up here because they would correspond to each other when I do that rotation. Let's finish up this proof. How can I show that these two triangles are congruent to each other? This is a nice start. Are there any other reasons that can help me? Well, I've used 
all of the corresponding parts, all of the parts of these two triangles that are in these two triangles I've talked about. But I notice that I've got a relationship between these two angles as well. What's the relationship between those two angles that would let me say that they're congruent? Well, there are two intersecting lines, these two diagonals, they meet at E and these are angles on opposite sides of that intersection point. So we remember our vocabulary from the beginning of the year, those are vertical angles. And I always know that vertical angles are congruent. Now I've got these three congruent statements. Is that enough for me to say that the blue triangle is congruent to the yellow triangle? And if so, what's my reason for that going to be? Well, it is enough information. So what I like to do when I get to this point is I can cover up one of the triangles. All right, so let's just look at the blue triangle. I've got two sides and I've got an angle marked in the diagram. I'm able to see these markings because every time I came up with a congruence statement, this congruent statement, this congruent statement, and this congruent statement, every time I identified one of these, I made markings in the diagrams to indicate those sides. So that gave me the ability to look at this and say, I have a side, a side, and the angle between them. So that's going to be my reason. I've got a side, a side, and the angle between them. So that's the SAS theorem that justifies that the blue triangle is congruent to the yellow triangle. Far more often, uh, this was a proof where we had a congruent statement as a given, and we found two things of CPCTC based on that. It is far more often that we are going to use CPCTC in a different way that will be given a proof where we need to prove the two sides or two angles are congruent to each other. And the way we're going to do that is that we're going to find two congruent triangles in the diagram that contain those sides or angles. And then once we prove that those two triangles are congruent, we can come to the conclusion of our proof by using CPCTC again. So let me say this one last time that CPCTC is not a reason that you could prove that two triangles are congruent. But once you have proven that two triangles are congruent, you can use CPCTC to prove that any two parts, any two sides, any side of this one triangle is congruent to the corresponding side of the other triangle, or any angle of the first triangle is congruent to the corresponding angle in the other triangle. So that's how you use CPCTC. It's a really powerful skill. And to just give you a hint, if you're looking at a proof and we've got a congruence statement, the next statement is, I'm going to say it's always going to be because of CPCTC. That's why you proved that the triangles were congruent in the first place. So that then you can go on to CPCTC as your reason.